Hello everybody and a very good morning to you. It is bright and early here in Australia. I have my little man and um, we have had a very exciting morning this morning here in Australia. The Paradox Life by You game announcement uh, event happened at 2.30 a.m. my time. Needless to say, I was not awake for it, but I did wake up at 5 a.m. with this guy and uh, have a look at the trailer. And then a little bit later on this morning, I had a look at the 20 minute live stream. So just in case you're not aware of what's been going on two weeks ago, two weeks ago, buddy, uh, Paradox Tectonic announced that they've been working on a life simulation game with Rod Humble at the helm. And uh, then this morning there was a big announcement event live stream and a new trailer. The teaser trailer that we got two weeks ago, I decided not to make a video covering because honestly there was just not enough in that trailer. We didn't know enough about the game. I was like waiting for more information. Today we do have a little more information and so I thought I would come on and make a little bit of a chatty video with you guys about some of my thoughts, uh, some of my reactions, some of my expectations and some of my concerns with this new upcoming life simulation game. So first of all, if you have not seen the trailer, um, we will watch it together now. So here goes. trailer and when I first watched it I was like oh my god what the heck did I just see and then I watched it again a second time with the uh, playback speed slowed down so I could catch a little bit more of what I was looking at um, but so the game so far I feel like I've seen a couple of very mixed reviews on the graphic style uh, but otherwise people seem fairly enthusiastic so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and share a couple of thoughts that I guess I have about the game. So first of all, the graphic style, which seems to have divided a lot of people, I actually love. I think that the game looks beautiful. Like if we take a look at their uh, kind of environments that we've got here, like this to me, where is like where they do the first flyover. This is stunning. This is really pretty to me. I think it looks really nice. I don't mind it at all. The style of the characters, I'm not as big a fan on. I don't think that the people look that nice um, I guess for want of a better word and I think that a little bit of work definitely needs to be done on the character design and just their appearances in general I'm I, I'm not sure if I like um they sort of show a couple of screens of the character creator which look like you do have a little bit of control over their features but I, I definitely think I need to see some more of the character creator itself oh to form an actual opinion on um, how how like powerful it is, how much control we have over making making the humans look individual and unique and interesting. Um, yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not super sure about it so far with the actual design of the characters. The other thing that really jumps out at me 
I guess it could be considered in terms of graphics or it couldn't could be considered in terms of like just the design of the game is the animations do look a little bit janky to my eyes um, and I don't necessarily love the the model of the people's bodies this animation here makes me laugh so much so these guys are meant to be making out this this guy I think is literally kissing her forehead this kind of thing really does frustrate me I don't like when animations don't line up properly and if this game is is said to be a really powerful sort of like storytelling device uh, with their conversation tool feature and everything that we'll get into um, I think a little bit more work needs to be done on the animations to make them sort of line up look a little bit more smooth and natural oh this was something else I was going to point out here this guy's little character profile picture this almost looks photo real Realistic, like almost like it's it's a little bit weird <laughs> and I'm kind of like oh, okay right not too sure about that um, and then if we go into the next one this girl looks a lot more cartoony compared to that last guy I don't know maybe that's just my eyes it's just a little bit a little bit weird <laughs> Yeah, for me, graphics are not the be-all and end-all of a video game. I still play The Sims 1 because it's fun and it has really fun gameplay, even though obviously it's very old and graphically not that impressive. <laughs> um, so I don't think that the graphics are going to make or break the game for me. For me, there are three sort of key cornerstone pillars that I feel a life simulation game needs to focus on in order to be a good life simulation game. The first is uh, career and education. I think career and education are one of the cornerstones of our existence here in a modern Western society. Our experience in education, our experience with career. This should be one of the key focuses of any life simulation game. The second focus for me would be on the, uh, the characters. What are their personalities? What are their motivations? What are their goals, desires, and dreams? And then the third cornerstone or the third important pillar for me is the actual gameplay in terms of family. Family is a cornerstone of our society. We all come from a family of some description. So what are the family options? What uh, sorts of families can we have? What is the experience of birth, life, and death? What age stages do we have? What gameplay do we have that makes the age stages feel unique? So in terms of career and education, I'm excited to see what this game will bring to the table because it seems like everything is open world. It seems like the businesses you can go into, there is a shot here of uh, what looks like an office of some description where someone is working when they talk about develop, like advancing through a career. So I think that's going to be really interesting. I've always loved playing open businesses and functional careers in The Sims 2 and uh, it, like it's open for business is my favorite expansion pack for The Sims 2 of all time. In The Sims 3, I played a lot with uh, Zerbu's. I think it was Zerbu's mods for like having active career places, active schools, active uh, and open, yeah, uh, environments where I can go in and interact with The Sims. And I just the other day released a video here on my channel about how I use mods to play active schools in The Sims 2. So a big, open, very dynamic and, and deep experience of career and education for me is key for a good, a good fun life simulation game. And I think this game it has a lot of potential there. The second pillar that I said, which is about sort of, you know, uh, deep and meaningful characters, motivations, uh, personalities, I'm a little iffy on with this game and I'll tell you why. So here we have a little bit of a view of the character creator. First thing I notice is we've got ages and I'm really interested to see more information on how the aging system is going to work, how the time system is going to work. If you watch the live stream, Rod talks about how you can like skip decades and like skip forward or skip backward or things like that. So I'm really interested to see how they have handled the aging system, how fast or how slow people are going to age up in this game and what the experience of that is going to be. In terms of life stages, we can see here this character is an adult and I was crossing my fingers waiting and praying that we would get a shot that showed us something about yeah that would show would show us something about what different life stages that we were going to actually get in the game and what I ended up discovering was when Hannah was talking about object editing tools which I think is around here there is just one random little screenshot that I was able to grab which shows the basic uh, life stages that we have here so we have baby toddler child teen adult and elder similar to the sims 2 and the sims 3 so it does seem like we have some type of an aging system. We do have some type of um, 
you know, uh, life age stages similar to those Sims games. And so I was really, really hoping to see more information about uh, these, but obviously we didn't get that in today's trailer or in the <laughs> dev chat. So for me, this is still very up in the air in terms of a make or break element of this game is how, what are those age systems going to be like? What is the generational play of this game going to be like? What speed is it going to run out? How customizable is that going to be? We, we just frankly don't have any information on that and I'm very interested to see what they have in store for us. Um, then I notice, uh, secondly, we've got gender, man, woman, non-binary, attracted to men or women or non-binary. This is great. I also notice pronouns up here, which is also great. I'm all about representation for everyone. Body shapes. This is, this is a weakness in my opinion. It looks like we've only got fat or thin or, you know, too sort of, or athletic or more plumpy. Um, this is, this is harkening back to like The Sims 2 here and I'm not a fan. Um, I would really like to have more customizable body shapes and this makes me think it's actually not possible to do any sort of in-depth uh, character customization in terms of pushing, pulling on different body parts. Um, I'm really not sure about this in particular. I'm like, mm. <laughs> This could be a weakness of this game. We obviously also don't see anything much about the uh, the face customization in this trailer or in this live stream whatsoever. Then here in the personality tab, we've got some interesting things here. We've got um, some upbringing notes and there's a screenshot I think that got released as well, which has some more uh, information on giving the characters a backstory. And that's interesting to me. I'm, I'm interested to see what uh, impact having a rural upbringing and a happy childhood will have on this uh, this character. Looks like we've got a lot of different character traits that we can assign and it doesn't seem like there's any particular limit to the amount. Uh, it seems like different people have different amounts of, of uh, character traits and I'm really uh, interested to see that. What is... Oh, okay, there was hair covering his face. Really interested to see that and what... Um, impact the traits will have over the people. Then we've got some some information here on the business and like the place of work and everything which is really cool. So uh, this lady works up the, works at the Cozy Up Cafe. I'm not sure if she's meant to own it or if she just works there. Oh no, she just works there. She's a barista there at the Cozy Up Cafe. Um, so I'm not sure if that means we could go and play her at work at the cafe. I'm hoping so and I'm assuming so. Got some information about where she lives and what kind of furniture she has and then a little picture of the thing, of the house. Sorry, not the thing. And then we've got here like vehicle preference. So she likes a bike and this guy likes a scooter and the guy before him likes a car. This uh, non-binary likes, I was gonna say this girl and then I was like, wait, let me check. This <laughs> this person, this human uh, likes an eco scooter. So that's all fun. But something I'm seeing that is missing, at least from what I have seen, is uh, any types of like aspiration, life goals, dreams, desires. What drives these characters? Uh, is it just their traits that drives them and their career? Does everyone just want to sort of have a job and raise a family? What kind of customization do we actually have for these characters, these humans, in terms of their goals, dreams, and desires? <coughs> Sorry. What a matter, honey. Um, I feel like I really need some more information on this before I am sold on the game because uh, this is a big thing for me. I, for me, it's like, you know, our what we want out of life is is one of our driving factors. So what drives these characters? What drives their stories? What drives their conversations? Is it simply, you know, where they live and who they're talking to? Or is it something more than that? Is it more to do with, you know, their goals, their aspirations, their lifelong dream? So do they have those? Uh, I'm really a bit nervous and I'm like, hmm. So the other thing that makes me nervous is that in the gameplay segment that we have here and the snippets that we get and uh, what what little preview of gameplay we actually got, you know, the UI has received a little bit of negative uh, feedback as well. Uh, for me, it's not too bad. Uh, so it looks like up over here, we've got, you know, the list of people who are in the household potentially. Uh, she's doing laundry, so great. We don't have to pay to get laundry in a DLC or mod it in. It's already in the game. Uh, we've got needs, which is great, but we don't seem to have any type of wants or fears. We don't seem to have any type of whims. We don't. So we've got here um, and you'll see this uh, notice up here changes a few times. Uh, so right now we've got like, welcome to town. Open the, open the package outside your door. So obviously Rod Humble is dropping 
dropping things off in our door again. Um, and then in the next one, we've got a budding gardener, plant seeds four times. So it looks like we've got quests and like a questing system, um, but I'm not seeing any types of like individual goals or, or, or wants or fears for these characters. It seems like, th yeah, there's no, there's no system that, that is, is, uh, comparable to that wants or fears system in The Sims 2. And for me, wants and fears is one of the reasons that I continue to play The Sims 2, even though the game is so old and there are newer Sims games and, you know, they're updated and have some features that are better. Yeah, like, uh, wants and fears, wants and fears, wants and fears. I will die on this hill. We need to have wants and fears. What do these characters want? What do they not want? What is important to them? What is not important to them? This matters, and I didn't see it in this trailer, and I'm like, mm, it makes me nervous. Do people just get assigned on quests based on their personality traits? I don't know. Um, I guess the other part of this is uh, Rod Humble in, in the stream talks a lot about how, you know, the world is always running and you can just jump around and sort of control different people as you go. So I'm very nervous. I'm very interested. I need some more information on story progression. So uh, can I freeze progress? for households if I want to and play rotationally like you can in The Sims 2. In The Sims 3, it's almost impossible to play rotationally without heavy use of NRAS mods, um, which are really quite complicated to set up. Uh, and rotational gameplay across a whole neighborhood is my favorite way to play uh, a life simulation game. It's why I do build a city challenges. It's why I play whole neighborhoods. Um, so what options do we have for that is, is an important thing for me. And um, yeah, I, I'm not sure I would necessarily love for the game to just be constantly running and I just sort of flick, flick around between households and not actually, not actually, yeah, play with them and, and see what's going on in their lives and have control over that. That's just me as a personal thing, like the way I like to play The Sims. So that does make me a little bit nervous. Um, I love to see shopping, by the way. And yeah, here is the, here is the part of, uh, so she looks like she's working in an office of some description, which is very exciting. So you can advance through jobs and careers. But again, what, what is it that decides what type of career that, is, that a character wants to have? What are they doing when I'm not controlling them? What, what progression is going on? What things are happening? What things are not happening? And what, what decides that? So uh, I think Rod Humble said, you know, the game will play according to your rules. How do I set my rules? What are my rules? You know, where where is that control? What control do we have over that? So, yeah, those kinds of things for me are really important and it makes me nervous. And I understand this is just the initial gameplay reveal. We do not know enough about the game to be making like, you know, blanket statements about, you know, what what is in the game versus what isn't in the game because we just don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that is really important for me. And um, then the third pillar that I talked about, family, we just have no information on really. We, we can see that they can get married. We can see that they apparently can have kids, um, but we just don't know what they have in terms of family gameplay. Cause right now all that we've seen is kind of like overview play. We've seen, you know, little bits of jobs we've seen. And then the live stream, you know, the rest of the stream kind of really focused on the modding tools that they're releasing, uh, or like just a couple of them in terms of the conversation creator and the, yeah, the object modding tools. And, uh, for me, the conversation feature, I don't know about yet. I'm waiting for a little bit more information on that. I've, I've heard, I've seen some feedback from people saying they're nervous that it'll just be the same conversations over and over and over again. Um, I kind of, for me, I don't know, it sort of had like almost Monkey Island vibes for anyone who's played Monkey Island and you can like uh, respond to conversations in different ways. So that's intriguing to me. I'm waiting to see, you know, I think this is like going to be a feature that I only know if I like it or don't like it after I've played a little bit. Um, but I do think the idea that, you know, where there's going to be modders out there making custom stories and conversations and stuff like that is, is a really fun idea. Um, and you can sort of see here, we've got befriend, romance, antagonize, help gossip or leave the conversation. So yeah, this is intriguing to me. And I think, I think I'm honestly just going to have to play the game to get a feel for it and discover if I like it or if I don't. Um, but it's an interesting idea. It's very different. And on that note, let me just say, I am really excited that this game is different. It's different. It's new. It's fresh. We do not, you know, have 
these features in The Sims. This is really, really interesting to me to see what they have come up with as a completely separate studio to The Sims. Um, we desperately, desperately, desperately need competition in the life simulation genre. The Sims team has held the monopoly for far too long and frankly, I think The Sims 4 is a very lazy game. You'll see more of this as if you continue to watch my Sims 4 gameplay that's gonna be coming out on the channel in the next couple of days because I don't know, I, I think the devs are lazy. I think the content is not fleshed out, it's not deep. I think it's, you know, I think it's high time that we have some competition because in my mind, competition breeds excellence, okay? It's, Aiden, you can't have the teapots. Aiden, you can't have the teapots on that shelf, uh-uh. No, no, they're not for you, buddy. Yeah, we need this competition in the life simulation genre. I'm very excited to see what this game ends up being like. I will definitely pre-order it. I will definitely get early access. I will definitely try it out. I've been a fan of Paradox for a long time. I love their games. Um, obviously, I play a lot of City Skylines and some of their other games too. So, But yeah, so those are just some initial thoughts that I had watching the, watching the new footage this morning, seeing the new screenshots and reading through the game description on Steam as well. Uh, it seems, sounds like it's going to be really powerful. It sounds like it's going to be huge. Sounds like I'm maybe going to need to upgrade my computer again in order to be able to run it, but we'll see. Hi. But yeah, so still I'm, I'm excited. I'm nervous. I'm cautiously optimistic, but there's still a lot of things that I'm wondering about and, and yeah, I'm not sure yet if this is going to be a game that I'm really going to enjoy or kind of be like a bit ambivalent about because it really depends on uh, how they handle these guys, obviously. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to leave this video for today. This was just a really quick chit chat. Uh, as I said, uh, let me know your thoughts down below. Are you excited? Are you interested? Are you going to give it a try? Or are you going to give it a miss? Um, are you a Sims loyalist who will only ever play the Sims? That's cool if you are. Um, for me, as I said, definitely going to be trying out this game come September. So what are you doing? What are you doing, silly? What are you silly, boo boo boo? Yeah, I'll continue to cover more uh, news tidbits as they come out. So uh, stay tuned to the channel for more. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And uh, yeah, we'll be back. <laughs> we'll be back later uh, with probably some more Sims 4 gameplay that will be coming out soon. So everybody take care. Have a fabulous rest of your day. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.